Today I've got a OnePlus phone on my desk, and it's completely unresponsive. I managed to hard brick it while experimenting with Kernel SU. In this video, I'll show you how to revive any hard bricked Snapdragon device by flashing the firmware and bringing it back to life. Whether you're using OnePlus, Motorola, Xiaomi, or nothing, this guide applies to all Snapdragon phones. Just keep in mind, this tutorial is for devices that refuse to boot into fast boot or recovery and don't even get detected by the PC. Now, you might be wondering why I'm heating up this phone with a hairdryer. Well, when a phone is completely dead, not turning on, not going into fast boot or recovery, and not even showing up on a computer, we're officially in hard brick situation. At that point, there's really only one way to bring it back to life, and that's by flashing the firmware using EDL points. EDL stands for Emergency Download Mode. It's basically a hidden Qualcomm feature that lets the phone talk directly to the computer at the hardware level, even when the software is completely gone. It's like the phone's emergency recovery buttons at the hardware level. To access those points, we'll have to open up the phone. Now, I'm not a technician or repair expert, just someone trying to fix my device at home. And honestly, it's not as scary as it sounds. The back glass is held together by adhesive, so the goal is to soften that glue. A little bit of heat from a hairdryer goes a long way. Once it's warm, I'll take a thin plastic card, find a small gap along the edge, and start working my way around. Take your time here. No metal tools, no force. Patience is key. If you've never opened your phone before, watching a tear down or disassembly video for your exact model will help a lot. Every phone's a little different inside. Now, about those EDL points, every Snapdragon phone has them, but manufacturers never label or publish their exact locations. So you'll probably have to Google your model along with EDL points. If it's a newer device, it might take some digging. There's also a tool called Borneo, which shows internal schematics for a lot of phones. A schematic is basically a wiring map that helps you trace where the EDL points are hiding on the motherboard. Only start opening things up if you're sure about what you're looking for. Once the back panel is off, I'll remove the PCB cover with a small screwdriver. So I successfully opened my phone's PCB cover. Always disconnect the battery connector first, that's important, and try not to touch any of the exposed components. On this phone, the EDL points are sitting right behind the camera module, so I'll take that off carefully too. And there we go. These tiny metal spots are the EDL points. This is what we'll use to bring the phone back from the dead. Now, let's switch over to the computer, and I'll show you how to flash a Snapdragon phone using these points. Start by searching for Qualcomm USB drivers on your computer and download them from a trusted website. Just make sure you're getting the latest version that's compatible with your PC. After you've got the drivers, you'll also need to download the firmware for your specific phone model. In my case, I'm working with a OnePlus 9R, so I'll be downloading the official firmware package for this exact model. This is important. Always make sure the firmware matches your exact model number and region. If you download the wrong one, you could end up with a soft brick or boot loop, and we definitely do not want that after all this effort. Now here's the thing. Depending on which Snapdragon phone you're using, the download source and flashing tool might be a bit different. The basic process is pretty much the same for almost every Qualcomm-powered device. Let me break it down by brand. For OnePlus phones, I'll drop a server directory link in the description where you can find all the firmware files you need. For Xiaomi devices, head over to miuirom.com or just search for miuirom download along with your model name. You'll want to download the official fastboot firmware file in .tgz format. Once you've got it, extract it and flash it using the My Flash tool while your phone is in EDL mode. For Motorola phones, check out lullanet.com or the Motorola Firmware Repository. These sites have official signed firmware images. You can flash Motorola devices using QFIL, which stands for Qualcomm Flash Image Loader. Alternatively, if you have a blank flash file, you can also go the command line route to flashing. For nothing, Realme, Oppo, and Vivo devices, you'll typically find firmware packages on their official support pages or in community forums. After downloading, you can flash them using either QFL or QPST. It is a Qualcomm flashing tool that work with most Snapdragon devices. No matter the brand, the rules are the same. Download firmware only from trusted or official sources. Verify that it matches your exact phone variant and always double-check the flashing tool version before you begin. 
All right, so I've downloaded both the USB drivers and the firmware for my phone. First thing, extract the USB drivers archive and you'll see a folder containing the driver package. Simply open it up and follow the on-screen prompts to install the drivers. Once that's done, we'll move on to extracting the firmware archive. Now in this video, I'm using a OnePlus phone and this particular method only works for OnePlus devices. If you're working with a different brand, you'll need to use the brand specific flashing method I mentioned earlier. So my firmware is now extracted. Inside the extracted folder, you'll see several files, including MSM download tool. This is the main tool we'll be using to flash the OnePlus firmware. Before you open it though, here's something important. Temporarily disable all antivirus software and Windows Defender. These security programs can sometimes interfere with the flashing process or even delete critical files from the tools directory. All right, the MSM download tool is now open and it's time to connect our phone to the PC. To keep track of the connection, open up Device Manager in Windows and leave it visible on your screen. This way, we can see exactly when the phone gets properly detected in EDL mode. Now, grab any sharp object with two tips or metal tweezer and use them to short the EDL points, just like I'm showing you here. While you're keeping those points shorted, plug the USB cable into your phone. Make sure the other end is already connected to your PC. If everything goes right, your device should pop up under the Ports section in Device Manager. Look for something like Qualcomm USB Loader. If your device isn't showing up, no need to panic. Just disconnect the battery connector, wait a couple of seconds, then reconnect it. After that, try the whole process again. Short the EDL points and plug in the USB cable. Sometimes the phone just needs a quick reset to properly enter EDL mode. Once your phone shows up in both Device Manager and the MSM tool, we're good to go. Just hit the Start button in the MSM tool. And there we go. The flashing process has begun. This is going to take several minutes, so here's the most important part. Don't touch the phone or the cable while this is happening. Even a slightly loose connection could interrupt the entire flash, and we really don't want to deal with that. After roughly 10 minutes, the flashing will finish, and the MSM tool will display either a download complete or passed message. Right about now, the phone will automatically reboot itself. And yes, it's finally coming back to life. Once your phone successfully boots up, you can start putting it back together. But before you seal the back panel with glue, take a moment to double check that everything's properly connected. Test out the camera, check the network connection, and make sure the speakers are working. You wanna be certain all the components are functioning correctly. And that's a wrap for this video. You've just successfully brought your OnePlus back from the dead using the MSM download tool. And there you have it. Our OnePlus phone is finally back from the dead, fully functional and running smooth as ever. There's something really satisfying about seeing a completely bricked phone come back to life, especially when you're the one who fixed it right at home. If this video helped you out, go ahead and drop a like. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this where I tackle repairs and tech experiments at home, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.